I've gotten very invested in watching studio vlogs over the past few months, so I thought it'd be really fun to try something different and make one myself. I feel like I don't really do too many exciting activities in my free time, especially with both working a retail job and the whole pandemic being a thing that's happening, but this was a pretty productive set of days for me, so I hope you guys enjoy seeing what I was up to. This footage here is actually a little bit older than everything else in this video, but a couple of you guys were so, so kind and sent me very sweet care packages to my P.O. box, so I really wanted to include the footage in this video. The very first package that I opened was from one of my patrons, Celine's, and she really, really spoiled me with so many goodies in this package. Everything was wrapped so professionally and was so beautiful, and she included so many like stickers and just goodies as a whole, so I really wanted to include this. She also has a shop, so I'll definitely definitely link that down below as well as her other social media in case you guys are interested in checking that out. But she sent me a bunch of stickers and she even makes her own sticker sheets and she's been super supportive and sweet over on my Patreon and is like always commenting on stuff and is really sweet interacting with me. So I really appreciate it and I was like so beyond excited when I was opening these because she let me know that she sent something to my PO box and she was just wanting to make sure that it made it safely. and. Oh my gosh, getting stuff in the mail first and foremost is really fun, but getting stuff in the mail that you don't know what it is is so exciting. And I like, I cannot believe how talented you guys are in the stuff that you make. And it's, it's just so exciting seeing the work that you guys put out because you're always seeing what I'm putting out or I'm making and the stuff I'm up to, but I never see the other end of it and like the art you guys are making. So it was really cool to get both of these packages and just see everything like you guys are doing and the beautiful, beautiful art that you guys are making. The second package I opened was from Jess and they also sent me some really cute stickers as well as a gorgeous print of their own artwork. It looks like Jess also has an Etsy shop but currently there's nothing listed but I'll absolutely leave a link to both their Instagram and their Etsy shop below. I ended up picking these two packages up at the same time for my P.O. box, and I found it really cool and very coincidental, but these prints that Celine's and Jess sent me, they definitely looked like they belong together. They had a lot of the same theme going on and the same color scheme and like stars and stuff, so I thought these prints looked so, so nice next to each other. And thank you guys again so much for sending these to me. They were something that was so fun to open up and really nice to receive, so thank you to everyone who has sent me stuff to my P.O. box. I really appreciate it. What is easily the most exciting thing that I was looking forward to this week though, was printing and sending out my first month of Patreon rewards. In November, I finally got around to launching a print tier over on my Patreon, and it honestly felt like November was dragging on for ever because I was really wanting to print everything out and get all the Patreon rewards organized, but I definitely wanted to hold off until at least the very, very end of the month so I knew how many prints I needed to print and how many stickers I needed to be making. I ended up making it until the very last day of November, actually. I should have waited until the 1st of December to get all that stuff going, but I was really excited to print everything and get everything organized. So like I said, I decided to start the very last day of November. I had that day off from work, so I figured it was a really good time to set aside to get that going. And I had so much fun putting together everything for my Patreon tier. By the very end of my first month, I had 10 patrons for my print tier, so that's an extremely manageable amount, a very nice amount, which I was honestly so surprised about like it's really hard when you're starting something new like that because you really don't know how many people are going to support that or are able to support that because it is something that it's not super expensive but it's it's weird to start because it's always a question of am i going to get no one supporting it am i going to get one person supporting it so for the very first month in my head i made the goal of like okay I really would love to have five patrons on my print tier. I would love to have five print tier patrons. And in the back of my head, I was like, I really want to hit 10. I feel like that would be so cool to hit 10. But my, I will not feel bad if I get this amount number was five, but my, I really want to hit this number was 10. So I was so excited when I hit 10 patrons for my print tier. So big, 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 big thank you to the 10 people who pledged to that tier, and also my patrons who are not on that tier, who are on the lower tier and get digital rewards. Thank you guys so much. It's been so fun working on Patreon and just especially doing physical rewards because that was definitely a really big milestone for me. 
This is essentially the first time that I've been able to, in a way, sell my art as prints and stickers. So, like I said, that's such a huge milestone for me because end goal for me, what I would like to do and what I would like to have as a job is to be a freelance artist and make my own income off of like Patreon and a shop, etc. So that's really what I'm trying to work towards at this point. And I feel like this is such a big step in the right direction for me because if you watched my video that I made about opening my Patreon prints here, like this is something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time and I've definitely set a lot of roadblocks in my way by myself of just worries of it not working out and coming up with excuses not to do it. And in a way, I'm still doing that when it comes to an online shop. Patreon is a lot easier for me because it's very uniform in what the task is versus with an online shop, I just need to have a lot more stuff set up. And also I feel like opening an online shop is, it's a lot bigger of a responsibility. It's a lot more work that needs to go into it. And on top of that, in the position I am right now, it's a pretty big financial burden in terms of I need to pay for a storefront because as of right now, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna open a store on Big Cartel. I know Etsy for a lot of people is a really good starting place, but I don't I don't even want to get into Etsy. There's so many fees on Etsy and that's kind of a nightmare for me. So I don't want to deal with that. And plus, I feel like a lot of people go on Etsy because it's such a big marketplace where people can search and find your art that way. But personally for me, I'm definitely focusing more so on my following purchasing my art versus random people looking at my art, which there's nothing wrong with the latter. I just feel like for me personally, it's it's mainly my following that I want to and expect to see traction from. So the appeal of Etsy having a big site where lots of people go to their marketplace just doesn't like appeal to me. So in the not super large amount of time that I've looked into having an online storefront, I'm pretty sure as of the time being that I'm gonna end up going with Big Cartel. If that doesn't work out, I'll probably switch to something else, but I honestly don't think I'll ever open a storefront on Etsy. Not that like I personally have anything against Etsy. I've just seen how many fees they take and like just the fees alone will make me have to raise the price of my product. And I feel like that's really stupid. So that's my little tiny rant about Etsy. But uh, as a whole, I would like to have an online storefront sometime next year. My original goal was to open it at the beginning slash middle of this year. I had a lot of like mental momentum in terms of making things work in that direction. And I was like, yeah, I really wanna do this. I have plans for it. I wanna get started on artworks. I wanna get started on this and that. And then the pandemic happened really early in the year. And then it just didn't happen, which I feel like needs no extra explanation. After I finished putting everything together for November's Patreon rewards, I realized I should really get on top of taking pictures of December's rewards to post on social media. So I had to really quickly go ahead and print out a sheet of the bonus sticker that I'm including in December's rewards. For November's print tier, I gave everyone a bonus sticker to celebrate the launch of my print tier, and I'm doing another bonus sticker this month as well. The two bonus stickers are going to be Patreon exclusive, so they won't be available to purchase whenever I do launch a storefront, but I think that's really fun because the two bonus stickers are the artworks of my current tiers available on Patreon, which are just little cat parfaits. Uh, one is based off of my cat Aslan, and the other one is based off of my cat Fiora, so the people who are pledged for both November and December will kind of have like a little matching set going on which I thought was really fun. I got a Cricut for making stickers a couple months ago after I very, very quickly learned that cutting stickers by hand was just not doing it for me. And it's been such a nice tool to use. I've seen a lot of other people have insane amounts of issues working with Cricuts, but my entire Cricut experience has been fairly smooth, honestly. I didn't have much troubles with it. And for the most part, it's been working really well for me. So I'm very happy to have it. It is such a nice tool. <laughs> My only problem with the Cricut so far was a slight calibration issue that I spent a couple hours trying to fix one day by just recalibrating the Cricut over and over and over again, which led to literally no progress, which was awesome. But then a couple weeks later, I recalibrated it once and it fixed it perfectly and now it cuts like right on target for me. So I really don't know what happened there, but it's cutting perfectly for me. So that's all that matters.
And like I mentioned earlier, I've been watching a good amount of studio vlogs myself recently, and I saw Apple Cheeks make a really cute pom-pom garland out of yarn in one of their studio tour videos, I think it was. So I figured it would be a really fun activity that had a lot of potential to add some cute decor to my own art space. So I bought some cheap yarn and threw one together real quick. It was a really nice activity to do while I had something going on in the background. It was a pretty mindless task, so I just set up my iPad and streamed Hulu and made a bunch of pom-poms with the yarn I had. I don't think I've made pom-poms out of yarn in at least the past decade, if I even ever have, but shamefully to say, uh, the first two pom-poms that I made looked absolutely horrendous, so I did have to look up a couple of YouTube videos to help with tips in making them, and thankfully in the end it didn't turn out so bad. And while the pom-pom garland was really fun to put together, like I said, it was a mindless task, so I was just able to watch TV while I did it, pretty much. I really don't know if I like it. I hung it up above my Cricut and where I have like my Ikea pegboard, but I don't know if I like it. We have really high ceilings in my apartment, so I'm debating on moving it up, but the command strips that I used to hang it do not hold the pom-pom garland, and I'm hesitant to put holes in the wall for it because if I don't like it, because currently I don't like the pom-pom garland, I'm gonna take it down and I'm gonna have holes in the wall that I just won't put anything, I don't know. I'm very, I'm, I'm very torn about the pom-pom garland, but it was fun. It was a very nice activity, very relaxing activity, but will it stay up? I don't know. <laughs> The sketchbook that I've been most frequently working in is a sketchbook that my good friend Sheeny designed the cover of. She did beautiful, beautiful, very aesthetic design on the front of the sketchbook, which I absolutely love. But something that she did do on the cover is Roman numerals, she put 2020 on the cover, which is totally fine. Like for myself, there is literally no technical obligation to finish it in 2020, but I really, really, the past couple months, I made it a very, not necessarily like I believed in myself to be able to do it, but in theory, I really wanted to finish this sketchbook before 2021. I did not have to by any means, but I really, really wanted to finish this sketchbook because for the entire year, I don't know if I finished any sketchbooks this year. Okay, that's a lie, I just looked it up. I finished a sketchbook in March, but that was the last time I finished a sketchbook. And normally, like, it takes me roughly six months to do a sketchbook, so this one's a little bit overdue. But with pandemic being a thing, I didn't draw for a lot of the past couple months. Like, my art production, it it took a nosedive, but we we're going uphill right now, which is very nice. I hope that continues. But I've also been working in a lot of sketchbooks at one time, which is something that I have not done, like, ever, I don't think. For the most part, I think in my entire lifetime of owning sketchbooks, I have primarily stuck to using just one sketchbook at a time. So this is definitely something that is very abnormal for my artistic journey, but it's been really nice using multiple sketchbooks. The big downside of that is it's taking me a lot longer to independently finish one sketchbook, but I was fairly close to this one. I kind of noticed it in, I think it was probably like September or October. I had like, 20 maybe 30 pages spread something like that left and i was like ooh based off of how fast i've been putting out art this is not happening so i've been kind of trying to primarily work in this sketchbook it's a really big strathmore one uh, the size was kind of bothering me so i was trying to fluctuate to using smaller ones but then i realized ooh, it'd be really nice to finish this sketchbook within 2020 because it says 2020 on the cover and like by no means, like I know, Sheeny, if you're watching this and feeling bad, don't feel bad because I know you put that on there. It's beautiful. I just made it this weird personal goal of mine to be like, I need to finish this in 2020. But I'm very happy to say I did, which I'm super proud of myself. I've been putting so much art in this, not probably not as much as I normally did like pre-pandemic, but all things considered, I'm really proud of myself for finishing this. I've been on a really good momentum with my Tombow, the water-based dual brush pens. I know Tombow now has like their alcohol-based markers and I've gotten a couple of those in Art Snacks, but if you ever see me using the Tombow brush pens, I'm probably using the water-based ones because I love them so much. They're such, such nice pens. They layer really well. They're really pretty. 
They're kind of expensive once you start buying a bunch of them, but I have a really good collection of them and I love using them. I definitely go through phases of using them where I'll go crazy for like a month or two and then I won't touch them for a while, but right now is one of my phases and I'm really enjoying it because I really like the look that they give when it's like a finished piece. It's still very sketchy in the terms like of how I use them. I don't make like super nice finished pieces. Also, oh my gosh, if you hear crashing noises in the background, that's my cat playing with her toys. So this is just how it is. But I've been really enjoying using these pens. I have filled so many spreads with these pens in the past like month or two. And overall, just, I love them. I love them so, so much. They really carried me through finishing this sketchbook. And like I said, I'm really happy to say I finished another sketchbook finally. So sketchbook tour will come eventually. Don't know when, but sketchbook tour will be coming eventually. <laughs> Studio vlogs are definitely very different from my normal stuff for me, but I actually had so much fun making this video. It was both more work and less work than my other videos because the editing and the voiceover themselves have been very casual compared to my normal stuff. But then as far as footage goes, it definitely took a lot longer to edit everything just because there was a lot more footage. But it was also really nice including so much real-time footage because I do do little bits here and there in my art videos of real-time footage, but I've kind of also wanted to do an entire art video of real-time footage just spliced really tight. So it's not going to be like an hour and a half long, it's still going to be like 10 minutes long. Just little clips here and there of real-time footage. So it was kind of nice to play around with a similar concept in this video. And like I said, I did have a lot of fun making this video. So if you guys would like to see more studio vlogs in the future, let me know. Like I said, I really don't do a whole lot of exciting stuff. This was honestly probably the peak of it because I had the Patreon orders to do and then I did a couple of other like little things here and there. But if you guys like this video, let me know. Like I said, I had a lot of fun making it, so I'd be more than happy to try and make some more in the future. But thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.